As a teacher, your role is not just to deliver knowledge and skills to your students, but also to impart some of yourself. Your insights, your attitudes, your values, your beliefs. The children that you come into regular contact with will select aspects of your personality and, knowingly or otherwise, make them part of their own. But of course you know that already. Now consider this. The young people that you influence today will pass something of you on to future generations. As a teacher, this is your legacy. So what will the next generation of teenagers look like? What will young people care about in 30 years' time? What kind of people will they be? Today's youngsters are profoundly influenced by technology. They carry it with them. They have instant access to a phenomenal amount of information. They can communicate freely with almost anyone, anywhere on the planet. And the price to pay? They're exposed to some real dangers. Bullying, violence, paedophilia, extremism. And they must also agree to give away something of themselves. Their contacts, pictures, locations, search history, browsing habits, anything that can be sold on. Indeed, the word privacy has a different meaning for teenagers. So where might technology take another generation? This is Jan Sherman. She's quadriplegic and she made news in 2012 by having a pea-sized implant fitted into her brain that allowed her to control a robotic arm simply by thinking. For the first time in a long time she was able to feed herself. Jan made news again in 2015 when she flew an F-35 fighter jet with nothing but the power of her mind. OK, it was a military simulator, but in every respect other than the fact that it couldn't crash, it was a fighter jet. She was able to take off, fly around at supersonic speed and land. Amazingly, technology that allows you to control a computer simply by thinking is already commercially available for as little as $300. And in as little as a decade, it will be possible to convert a person's internal monologue into editable text and to take images from the mind's eye and turn them into bitmaps on the screen. This is Diane Ashworth. She's completely blind. In 2016, she will be fitted with a bionic device that will completely bypass most of her visual system. Instead of eyes, a camera will feed information about the world directly into her brain. As this system evolves, it will become miniaturized, non-invasive and eventually superior to normal sight. People will be able to see in the dark, beyond the colours of the rainbow and over great distances. This is Theodore Berger. His team have developed a memory prosthesis that will undergo human trials in 2016. This device was created to help people that suffer memory loss as a consequence of epileptic seizure. During development, this implant was put into a rat and it was trained to find its way through a maze. Data from this implant was then uploaded to another implant in a different rat which was immediately able to find its own way through the same maze. It would seem then that the possibility of being able to transfer memories and skills from one mind to another, at the flick of a switch as it were, is no longer confined to the realms of science fiction. Indeed, the possibilities seem endless. So what of teenagers in 30 years' time as these and other technologies continue to evolve, converge and become commonplace? Perhaps a tsunami of digital information will be fed directly into their heads and they will lay bare their innermost thoughts and feelings on a global scale. Perhaps they will communicate with each other telepathically, wirelessly, over great distances. 
Perhaps knowledge and skills will be uploaded and downloaded to and from their electronically enhanced minds. And perhaps, when it all becomes too much, they will retreat into an infinitely diverse computer-generated paradise. Humanity is likely to change more in the next 30 years than in all of human history, and this will be driven by technology. How teenagers of the future interact with their world and each other depends very much on how we interact with teenagers today. Slavery to a blinkered, myopic, conservative curriculum will produce a handful of good exam results, but little else. Curiosity, discernment, reflection, perspective, these are qualities that young people will need in 30 years' time. Qualities that we can pass down the generations, starting now.